Muscle is an example of highly organized cytoskeletal elements, which include not only actin, but the very much thicker filaments called myosin. Between the two of them, thick and thin filaments, or myosin and actin, these use the chemical energy of ATP hydrolysis to generate force. For a muscle to get shorter, that contraction is able to generate force to lift the weight. So we're going to look at the interactions of actin and myosin filaments. So here we have a muscle bundle, which is basically the muscle that you would give a name, like uh, biceps, right? The muscle is surrounded by a membrane or a sheath, and inside the sheath is this bundle of muscle cells it's called myofibers. And myofibers are actually multinucleates. So you're looking at a muscle cell, a muscle fiber, with multiple nuclei. A cell with multiple nuclei is called a syncytium, and these kinds of cells form when normal cells with one nucleus each merge. Their membranes disappear and you get one much larger cell. And this happened during embryonic development of muscle cells in our bodies. Now, in that cell is in turn a bundle of myofibrils, and this is the contractile apparatus of muscle cells. And if you look at the bottom of the illustration, we see some components of the myofibril, which we will revisit in a different picture momentarily. If you look in a light microscope, you can see the myofibrils that form striations or stripes. If you look at thin slivers of uh, body muscle containing multiple cells, the muscle and the cells will appear striated in the microscope, and that's because of the cytoskeletal components, in particular actin and myosin, as well as proteins associated with those. In the bottom picture, we can see the thin filaments, the actin filaments, interdigitating with the thick filaments or the myosins. Electron microscopists looked at the muscle, both relaxed and contracted. They came up with a mechanism of contraction that involved the sliding of these actin and myosin filaments past one another. So what looked like interdigitating actin and myosin in the cartoon moments ago would be seen to slide past one another during muscle shortening or contraction. This is a high-resolution electron microscope picture through a sarcomere, a contractile unit of a myofibril, in its relaxed state. Let's look at a contracted one. You can see that the contracted sarcomere is shorter. We can identify what's called a Z-line, the line between consecutive sarcomeres. And what you see is that the Z-lines have come closer together in the sarcomere of a contracted muscle. Contraction is, in effect, pulling uh, Z-lines closer together. The actin, the thin filaments, can be seen in this illustration as the lighter region of the sarcomere. And if one looks at even higher power and resolution, you can see the 10 nanometer fibers, which are actin filaments. They constitute together something that was called the I-band. In a sarcomere, there are two I-bands at either end, representing actin filaments projecting into the sarcomere from the Z-line. I say it that way because, in fact, we know that the actin filaments are actually attached at the Z-line. So they do project inward to the sarcomere from the Z-line. The dark material, when looked at fairly closely, turns out to consist of thick filaments and interdigitated thin filaments, and that region is called the A-band. The width of the A-band is the length of myosin filaments. The darkest region of the sarcomeres, and there are two of them on either side of a, of a middle band, is the region where actin and myosin overlap. And that's what you would expect. If the actin and myosin overlap, it should look thicker or darker in the microscope than where actin sits alone, or towards the middle of the sarcomere in the relaxed state, certainly, where the myosin filaments are not associated with actin. The overlap region, when you look at it in cross-section, shows that each myosin, the thicker dots, is surrounded by six actin filaments. I mentioned a second ago the middle line or mid-region of the sarcomere. You can see that the middle region is present in both relaxed and contracted skeletal muscle. And then there's a region in the relaxed muscle called the H zone. And by now you could probably figure out what that is. That's that middle line, the myosin that is not interacting with or overlapping actin. And as you can see, if you look at the contracted sarcomere, the H zone has been virtually wiped out, 
except for the midline or middle line.